Hey, and welcome back. Today I thought we would open up a burnt CFL and see if we can salvage some parts from the inside. Now I know, um, I think it was Julian Islet that was saying that these things are a wonderful source of inductors. So, well, let's see what we can find inside. I have a few of these. If it goes quickly, I can open a couple. So first I'm going to try popping the end cap off because I've seen Big Clive do that on certain models. LED lights, mind you, not uh, CFLs. Gonna have to be careful on this thing not to uh, break the glass because there is mercury in here. See, HG. And I know the maybe the people being scared of mercury is a bit much, but um, yeah, let's try to be careful anyway. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Let's try. I don't know. I feel like over here is my best bet. I kind of don't want to just crush this because I'm hoping there's some cool stuff in there. Oh, there's the cap. Okay, that's kind of... There's a little wire in there. I feel like I might have to undo these crimps here might be a little difficult maybe I'll chip away at this plastic Oop. careful not to stab myself I'm gripping it kinda of by the base here not really by the glass Now I did test these lights before unplugging them just to make sure they were dead. So there could be some residual voltage in the capacitors in here. That is entirely possible. So this metal actually breaks apart pretty easily, which is good. But will the inside separate easily? That's the question. Okay, so I can see down in there. Looks like there's a transformer. There is some cool stuff in there. Just don't know if I can liberate it without breaking too much. So that's free there. Grab this and just scooch this away. Dangerous metal bits. Looks like breaking the plastic is the easiest way in because I'm not sure about this seal here. But like I said, I have a few of these, so if this works really well. I could then uh, attempt something different on the other one. There's the other cable. It's not, not ground because this is a AC voltage. So one's live, one's neutral. In the end it is a ground but much more convoluted than that. The 
This is messy. But if I can salvage something, it's much nicer than just throwing everything away. I've got to be careful here because there are some capacitors in there. Just slowly nibbling away at this. Looks like you can just smash the side open. I would just be afraid to break the glass. Interesting. I've seen these with uh, bigger inductors than that. But it's possibly because... So this inductor here is tiny, but that could be because um, that it actually has a transformer involved. So I'm going to short out the capacitor or short up the wires. Let's see what we have to do to lift this PCB up. It's obviously secured to the lamp portion. Just trying to see how to liberate it. It does look kind of clipped in there. Just looking for a smaller screwdriver here. Make sure this is all shorted out. This cap. Yep. Not worried about saving this all. Oh. I think I may have broke the glass. I did. It's not good. Might be a bit of mercury escaped. Well, thankfully I'm in a well-ventilated area. I don't know if you can see there. That pip inside there is open now. Seems to be just uh, the electrode wires wrapped around these posts. I'm trying to undo them. I think that's the key to success here. Can lift that up high enough and just snip them off. There we go. Can throw that away. All right. Well, what do we have here? So we've got these little caps here. I'm trying to read them. S250473J. I'm not sure. This thing here says 1200 volts on it, this little guy. I think these are decent. There's another 1200 volts. I think these are decent film capacitors. This guy, it's a 10 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor. So that one's easy. I don't need the legs that long, so I can actually just snip that guy off. I 
There's one leg. There we go. Got one 200 volt 10 mic cap out. That's good. I kind of like this inductor here, but it looks like it would be a pain to remove. These caps should all be removed, I think. These film capacitors. What do we have in here? 13003 and 13003. So these two semiconductors are 13003. I'll look that up, what that is. These look like diodes. Not too interested in those. This piece is solid core wire, not that interested. Might keep it as a breadboard jumper. There we go. Since it's solid cord, not stranded. I really want this transformer. But I'm trying to see how many connections it has to the board. Looks like it has eight eight connections. I don't know if you can see that. Right underneath there. Right in here. It's very hard to see. Might sacrifice this one. and get it off another one just so I can see how it's done oh, we got a little tingle off one of these caps make sure that's shorted It's so dense in here, I can't really see the um, where the wires go through. It doesn't seem held down by very much either. Okay, well, I guess we're going to try to pull some parts off of this. Let me get you closer in and we'll have a look. Okay, hopefully that's close enough for you to see. I'm going to try to rip these film capacitors off. Just letting my soldering, soldering iron warm up. I'm going to see if I can just heat up the pads and pull it right off without uh, any fuss. I don't think so, but uh, this thing was destined for the trash in the first place, so I'm actually not too worried if I can't actually remove it. I might need to tip it with some new solder. Come on. Oh, that one came out. So one side is out, just need that last side, there we go, that's one of our caps out. Got to be careful when you slip. trying to pull outwards. 
but it kind of flips the board a little bit when it lets go. And if you force on the leg, you can damage the leg or you can slip and burn your fingers. So you just need to get a good grip there. And sort of pressure it in different directions. This is how I first started salvaging components before I had a solder sucker or anything like that. If you don't have a solder sucker, I highly recommend it. They're only a few bucks. In fact, I lost mine. And uh, I was actually going to buy a new one. And they're only like three, four bucks on eBay. They're worth it. Then thankfully I found mine. And there's another one off. This one's a little different. It's over here. This is all that uh, lead-free solder. It's not fantastic to work with. It doesn't flow as nicely. I understand the need for it. I get it. Commercial products should probably use lead-free. I realize that makes the products not light, last quite as long because the um, the joint elasticity isn't as good. But I get it. We've been uh, poisoning our natural resources with lead for long enough, I guess. But in hobby use, you shouldn't feel guilty for it at all. It's a very low volume product. In the big scheme of things, hobbyists don't do much wrong. And don't worry about lead solder for your hands either. Because as long as you wash your hands after you solder, you're pretty safe. The amount you absorb in your skin is minimal. And the fumes, believe it or not, are not solder fumes. They are uh, rosin fumes from the flux. Not a picture of health, but they're not lead fumes. Am I pulling on the wrong leg here? One and two. No, nope, those are the right ones. This little cap's a little harder to remove. There we go. Got him. Okay, I definitely don't need these resistors. I'm going to clip them off. Just to clear some space on the board. Don't need this little piece of wire. That's good. Don't need these micros or these transistors or whatever they are. Regulators or whatever. Don't need them. This resistor is the same. Don't need it. Just clearing some space on the board. Take these posts out. They're pinging across the room. go. Okay, so now there's a diode. Don't think I'll be needing that. And there's this inductor and this transformer. What I really want is the transformer. I'm just not sure how to go about this. There's definitely a wire coming here. There's definitely a wire, I believe, over here. Maybe this guy, maybe this guy. 
hard to say. I think it's this one. And is there a wire here? There's definitely a wire here. Take this one. That's from the cap. Definitely a wire here. I think it's this guy. But there seems like there's a wire in there too. Right here. I'm going to start heating some pads up and see what happens. So I believe this is one of them. Definitely getting some movement here. Not entirely sure which is which. Hopefully, I'm not too bad out of focus. kind of grabbing it with my thumb and rolling my thumb forward as the joint heats to try to push the board away. Yeah, I've got another connection down there for sure. I think it's this one here. Not sure which one of these two it is. At least I'm not at all concerned about damaging the board. Oh, it's definitely this one. Heat's getting at my fingers now, though. Ouch. I don't know if you can see that. It's almost out. I'm going to start on the other side. Looks like the other side is only one corner, not two corners. And that came out quite a distance. I wonder if this is a center tapped transformer. It'd be interesting. It's definitely this guy here. Sometimes this is all it is, just heating up a corner at a time. There we go. Yeah, it's a three wire. So maybe it's a center tap transformer. That would be amazing if it is. All right, do I try to save this little inductor? I think that'd be a pain in the butt too, but let's give it a try. Try to get a whole side out. Oh, nope, that's getting too hot too quickly. Yeah, I think we're gonna leave the inductor. So let me just uh, test all these caps and this inductor uh, or transformer on my component tester and yeah, we'll see if they're testing good. Well, I've got the component tester out. So uh, let's start testing some components. I'm just gonna jam, this is a 10 nano, I think. Yeah, uh, micro, 10 microfarad. Is it possible it's micro? Uh, yep, yeah, microfarad. There we go, it's a 10 microfarad capacitor. That's good. Let's give us the ESR on that and everything. Perfect. So let's check these other guys. So this one here says four, 
73J. I'm going to guess it is a 470 um, microfarad capacitor. forty seven point five nanofarad okay so it's forty seven something that's good this guy is identical I believe so I'm gonna slap it in the same way forty five tested a bit lower that's fine is it marked 45? It is written 473. So this one seems a little out of spec. Uh, this guy here says, not sure, something 3N0J. Do have annoyingly short leads though because they've been salvaged but you can always solder new leads to them. I use salvaged uh, components like caps and stuff to prototype circuits and then I will buy a bunch once I know which capacitor I need. So 2848 Pico. Okay, yes, ours is high, 17 ohms. All right, this one here, 272J, 1200 volts high voltage cap twenty six oh nine picofarads okay this last one here is I think the smallest one it says six eight one J twelve hundred volts I don't know if that actually clamped in. Get in there. Six hundred and ninety-four pico. Okay. So now this guy here. I don't know if this will actually fit properly. Let's see. If I can just jam those two pins in and leave the other floating. Now it's sort of touching another pin. There, let's try holding it up. I think this will just show as an inductor. Mm, no. Not sure if I'll be able to get this in. Not everything has the right pin pitch. I might have to get a jumper lead or something. No. Interesting. Although, uh, that is interesting because, okay, so this pin, I don't know if you can see, let me just zoom you in. So you see this pin here has a copper wire going to it. This one here has a copper wire going to it. But this one seems like it doesn't. So I think it's these two diagonally opposed ones. So I think get number one and this guy in like this. There we go. So it's an inductor. 1.9 micro henries. Mi milli henries. M. It's a big M or small M. Interesting. Hmm. So you used to, at least uh, I've seen a bunch of videos where people got cool ferrites out of that, out of these uh, things. I There is a ferrite here. I can just snatch the ferrite. It's a lot easier than trying to 
desolder it, you just cut the wires off. So there, I have a ferrite, and I've got a bunch of caps. I have one inductor, and I, I mean, if I wanted these resistors, I guess I could use them, but not really interested in that. I have this piece of solid core wire, and that's not bad for a single um, compact fluorescent bulb that was just actually going to go into the trash. So, yeah. As long as you're not afraid of the mercury, go ahead and uh, open one yourself and see what you can find. Let me know what you've found in the comments below. Thanks for watching.